Good evening and welcome to Asian Review. We have got a fabulous program set for you this evening and we're going to be talking with the Pacific and Asian Affairs Council and we're going to be talking about their role as another one of the incredible pillars or bridges, if you will, of Hawaii into Asia. And with us this evening uh, to start off the program is uh, N Natasha Schultz. Hi. And so Natasha, it's great to have you here. Thank uh, you. Um, Tell us a little bit about um, what your your function is at the Pacific Asian Affairs Council, and then we'll get into kind of the program generally here. So, what's the what 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 is it that you do? I'm the high school program director at PAC, as we like to call it, um, and so I run basically all of the outreach programs that we have to high school students throughout the state of Hawaii, except for our after school class program, which is run by a consultant, but. Um, the rest of our programs, all that um, have the goal of informing students, helping them become aware and interested um, about the world. And so what is the kind of the, the, the broad mission, if you will, mm -hmm. of the Pacific Asian Affairs Council? What, our, what, what are we trying to do here with this organization? Our mission is to um, promote increased understanding and awareness of the Asia Pacific region and the world, but with a focus on Hawaii's role. Okay, and so what are the what are the kind of the the events or ways that you fulfill that mission? What are the kinds of things that you do? Sure. Um, well, I've already mentioned the high school program which I run. Um, we have conferences, interschool conferences that are held statewide that cover um, international topics such as water, which is our upcoming topic we were just discussing. Um, we did a model APEC when APEC was in town in 2011. Okay. Okay. Um, we also sometimes focus on trade, sometimes on food security, um, sometimes on um, displaced people or U.S. trade policy. It's, it's varied, so we switch it up um, every semester. Um, we also have an annual academic competition which um, focuses also on international topics with the um, added incentive of um, the winning team goes to Washington, D.C. to um, represent Hawaii in a national competition. Okay, so if we, if we take this, I, I'm sorry, did I, did I cut you off at all? Did I, um, was there another well, piece there? there's actually a lot more, okay, so I don't well, know how wanna, much you want me to say. So, no, but um, I want, I want, the, I want our, our the viewers, viewers to, real, to really be able to get, to get a feel for this, this incredible array of programs mm -hmm. that the Pacific Asian Affairs Council, because this is a private foundation, basically, a nonprofit group. It's a right? nonprofit. We have a lot of private funding. We have some federal funding. Um, we get creative with our fundraising, but um, we have a lot of supporters. And um, so I've kind of, I mean, I've mentioned most of the components of our high school program, except for the travel program, which we're going to hear a lot about tonight. So I'm not going to delve into that. Okay. Um, All right, well. Outside of the high school program, we have a State Department funded program, which brings in up and coming um, professionals from okay countries all around the world that meet with their counterparts when they tour the United States. And we host um, visitors as they pass through our state. And we also hold um, local forums and other kinds of um, formal and informal lunches, dinners, talks, um, people locally and also passing through on different kinds of international topics, what's happening, just so people that comprise our membership can kind of keep up to date with the world as you well. Know, you know, you as a, as a viewer, watching this program, I mean, you got to be saying to yourself, what a phenomenal organization to be putting all this together for uh, our future young leaders coming out of Hawaii here. I mean, it's just an awesome array of things. And so have yeah. we covered all the major components of generally of what the Pacific Asian Affairs Council does, except for the travel program? Generally, yes. Um, we also help at the community colleges with their international festivals. Wow. And um, yeah, and we have a small staff, so we really just work hard to um, harness resources and to bring as much as we can to our members and constituents. Okay, so the big picture is this um, for our viewers mm -hmm. here, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the basic concept behind the Pacific Asian Affairs Council, the, the mission, if you will, is to take the, the young leaders, the future leaders of our community, and to really um, acclimate them to the the culture, the international politics, the foreign policy, the trade, the business, whatever is going on in mm -hmm. the Asia Pacific region as kind of as a, as a setup for their future career in education. Is that somewhat? With, with the high school program, yes. And um, 
as you as you were saying that, um, it came to mind also that I didn't mention another key component of our high school program, which is an Arabic language and leadership program. Is that right? With we the, do that in Hawaii? With a study abroad component, and that's new. Um, it's only the second year for us, and we're only at Campbell. Um, however, it's that kind of, um, you know, forward-thinking Wait a minute, let me see if I understand. We bring you do, you, do, you do an <laughs> Arab language study program. It's Arabic language, leadership, and study abroad, which comes in many forms. Um, the whole class doesn't study abroad together. They just have different opportunities well, where, So these are students abroad. from Campbell High School? Yes. And do they study abroad in, in uh, one of the countries in the Middle East? Um, last year, two students went to Qatar. Interesting. And um, Interesting. we're hoping to send some to perhaps Morocco this coming See, year. See, I bet it's you not... didn't know that because I didn't know that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just not for sure, but okay. we're working on okay. it. You know, we want them to really have an opportunity to use those language skills. Awesome. All right, so so now let's focus in on um, kind of the the main thrust of what we want to talk about today, mm -hmm. and that's the travel program. Yes. And what what's that all about? So this is our summer study tour, which is generously funded by the Freeman Foundation. And it's um, our eighth year now, or actually ninth year. Ninth year Time ninth flies. Year. So we have um, one program a year, which um, has two components. There's a component on Oahu, which is a week long, which you've been involved in okay. several times. We prepare, times, yeah. prepare students to travel to the country that we'll be visiting. Um, they have okay, so let me just talk to the parents out there. <laughs> if you have a, a high school student, just rest assured that the Pacific Asian Affairs Council doesn't seatbelt them into an airplane and then fly into a strange foreign country <laughs> and then kick them out the door. There is an extensive preparation process, yeah, right? Yeah, there is. And it doesn't just start at UH, because actually um, we do our best to make it rigorous and to also make sure that it's not just um, sightseeing. You know, that they're going to come back and understand a little bit more about the country and that they're not. We love to tell them and, you know, they'll say we didn't feel just like a tourist. Like we felt like we knew more. We did more than just a normal tourist. It's a study tour. Um, we have a lot of great connections in the countries that we visit. And um, we spend a week at UH as a group. And then we spend usually two weeks or 16 days in the country. And um, I keep saying country because we change our destination um, so far, and you know, we hope to expand, but we've been able to take students to China and Taiwan, Korea, South Korea, um, Vietnam, and China. I said that already. You, you know, this is just, you know, when you think about it, um, the, the careers that are going to be available in the future, mm -hmm. and the kind of the, the shrinking nature of the global environment that we live in, this, this, um, this whole program that uh, Pacific Asian Affairs Council does is just, a, you know, it, it's actually a priceless life preparation experience, if you will, yes. when you think about it. And, and uh, so we want to we talk about, a, a, specifically about a trip to Vietnam yes. here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my understanding is that you had a whole group of, of students that you personally took to Vietnam this, yes. past, mm -hmm. this past trip. Um, why Vietnam? Well, Vietnam, for, for two main reasons, but so many reasons, um, our scholarship funds are limited to Asia. So all the countries I listed, you know, have been okay. in Asia. But Vietnam is really dynamic, up-and-coming country and is really um, looking towards the future. Its economy is growing. Their people there are really, for the first time, having access to education, having access to um, really... A ton of opportunities. So as we go forward in this century, we're going to see a lot more coming out from Vietnam. And so our students being, um, you know, in the know about the country, becoming familiar with their people, their customs, their history, are going to have kind of a leg up if they kind of are looking to the Asia region. You know, Natasha, just very recently, there was a gentleman sitting in the chair where you're sitting mm -hmm. right now, and we were having a conversation about kind of looking to the future for our children, and um, we were talking about some of the changes that have been taking place in China, and this gentleman is uh, Mr. Ralph Casa, who's mm -hmm. the president of Pacific Forum. And on our board. He's on your board of directors, <laughs> and yes. what, what Ralph was telling, uh, telling our viewers here is that, hey, you know, you look at some of the challenges that China has, and and so he's. So I asked him. So so where in the Asia region would you would you focus on? Where is the future in terms of business and opportunity? And he said, 
Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just, I think, it, I think it's awesome that the Pacific Asian Affairs Council is setting up our kids, if you will, mm -hmm. for, for a future in a country that is clearly in the crosshairs of, of success. Yes. You know? And um, we're going to speak to some of our students, and um, I'm sure they'll agree that when they meet these Vietnamese people, um, they see that they're very motivated, they're looking towards the future, they're bright, they're, you know, they're really, it's not hard to believe that Vietnam is going to be a major player. Well, okay, so I want to meet the students, and we want the, the viewers out there to, to meet um, some really talented superstars yes. here. And so, but before we do that, I want to ask you one, one really important question. Okay. Um, and this, let's set aside the, the preparation for the future, uh, you know, country choice and everything. Mm -hmm. You've had the benefit of being this travel, uh, I don't want to demean what you do, but, but among the th many things that you do, Natasha, uh -huh. is the, the kind of the travel coordinator, and you personally are escorting these students. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. What have you seen in terms of um, uh, kind of the giant aha, uh -huh. or, or I don't know how to, how, to, how to really phrase it, but kind of a, the, the life-changing aspect yeah, of this kind of Yeah, I know what you're talk. asking. How much time do I have? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to save some time for the okay, students, okay. But, 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 but you know what I'm saying? What, yes. What, what, tell the viewer, um, what, what do you see? What have you experienced? Um, there's really a lot of growth and a lot of excitement on the trip. And there's, there's a lot of levels, but the, the two main levels that I see a lot of changes in the students, one is on the personal level. And for so many of these students, it's their first time out of the country. I've taken students on their first plane ride. I mean, this is really brand new for a lot of students, not all. But so, you know, I see a lot of um, just personal growth in terms of confidence, in terms of their leadership skills. We ask them to do so many things. We ask them to dance, like on stage, in front of strangers, to interact with young people, to teach English classes, to volunteer, to sleep, like in bamboo, still houses. I mean, there's so many things that they're taking on and succeeding that it's impossible to not come back a different person. Oh, for the parents, it's not all bamboo still <laughs> no, no. houses. There are some four-star hotels. There are four-star yeah. hotels. Okay. I mean, it's a, okay. it's, a, um, it's a varied trip. We give them a lot of different okay. opportunities. So that's one. And I've heard a lot of feedback from parents, not just from students that have noticed changes in their, in their son or daughter when they return. And so that's one very important um, you know, outcome of the trip. And the other level that I see a lot of change comes from their academic or their career goals. You know, a lot of students come on this trip and find that it changes the course of their studies or um, their goals either expand, like, oh, I wanted to do business, but now I want to do international business. Or okay. even, I thought I wanted to be an accountant, but now I want to do international <laughs> studies. Like, you just, you know, at that age, they're, sometimes they don't even know that they're interested in um, foreign relations. And so, you know, we have a lot of students, and you're going to meet one today who um, goes on to just get scholarship after scholarship after scholarship and, you know, spend more and more time okay, overseas. Okay, who is that? Who is that we're going to meet? Brittany. Brittany Moorhead. Okay, and Brittany, um, where did she go to high school? She went to Ka'u High Ka'u School. Ka'u High School, and, Big um, Island. Yes, for those of you that don't know where Ka'u is, um, it's on the southern part of the Big Island, and I've been there a number of times, and it's, it's quite country. It's out there. Okay. You know, okay. so to go from Ka'u to, like, Ho Chi Minh City, it's really It's different. sort of like night and day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a very and, different experience. And, and okay, so we're going to meet Brittany Moorhead in a few mm -hmm. minutes, and who else are we going to meet? We're going to meet Sierra Callahan okay, and from Aea High School. Aea mm -hmm. High School. So is yes. there any of you parents out there from Aea you want to focus <laughs> in, because Sierra's going to be here. Yeah. Okay, and so one last thing before we, we get a chance to talk to the, to the students here. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you this. You know, if you, if you visualize kind of what's happening here, Natasha. There are lots of um, uh, high school students all over the state watching mm -hmm. this program. I hope so. Mm -hmm. And there are parents yeah. all over the state watching this program. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they, they're they probably saying to themselves, okay, this is really cool. How do I find out more about this program? Sure. What do they do? Well, um, we have a lot of this information on our website, which is probably the easiest thing to do, which okay. is um, paachawaii.org. P-A-A-C, PAC, 
uh-huh. paachawaii.org, okay? Yes. So on our website, we have, you know, pages for all of our different activities, and we have a travel program page or a travel scholarship page under the high school program. And um, there we, we do have a couple of, we're going to be seeing pieces from our documentary because we take um, students from Sea Rider Productions or sometimes not even from Sea Rider Productions who take video and they okay. document what we do. So we have several of the past year's documentaries we have links t- to those um, programs. We also have um, a trip report. We have the application. This is really what you're asking. Okay, okay. Application is posted there. It's actually on our homepage as well. And um, you can you can watch videos. You can read about the programs. You can download the application and have your son or daughter apply for the program. Okay, now is your email address on that website? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, and how about is your phone number on yep. that? Mm-hmm. So you can get a hold of Natasha yes. directly. Yep. This is Natasha Schultz, Pacific Asian Affairs Council. I Council. get a lot of calls, and I'm happy to um, speak to anyone that's interested in the program. Well, let's do this. Let's um, invite these two uh, students to uh, come on this program and talk with us a little bit Great. about their experiences. And uh, I, I appreciate you uh, spending the time with us here and uh, laying out this program for audience. I think that this yeah. is uh, one of the great bridges to Asia that uh, comes out of Hawaii here that's built by the Pacific Asian Affairs Council. So, uh, yeah. Natasha Schultz, thank well, you very much. And thank you so much because whenever people hear about this program, I, I hear a lot of, why don't I know about this program? And so really just appreciate the chance to get this get the word out like not just the travel but also just the programming we have here locally it's really open to everyone and we invite everyone to come and get involved with what we're doing you're watching asia in review i'm your host david day and we'll be back in just a second here we're back and magically natasha schultz has metamorphosized metaphors metamorphosized yeah i got that word metamorphosized into Brittany Moorhead. So, Brittany, <laughs> welcome to Asian Review. It's nice to have you here. Um, is this the first time you've been on television? Yes, it has. Okay. All right. Well, they're out there. They're just as excited to see you as we are to be there. And but we don't get a chance to see to see all the folks out there. Mm-hmm. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Brittany Moorhead. Uh, you you've heard uh, Natasha's introduction, uh, formerly of Kau High School. And where are you going to school now? I'm currently attending Kapi'olani Community College. Okay. And what are you studying there? Um, at the moment, I'm in a Korean intensive language program, preparing wow. to study abroad in Busan, South Korea this summer. All right. Now, hold on a second. This, the, we got to put these pieces together because, <laughs> you know, there's, there's probably a lady by the name of Mildred, and she's sitting on the edge of her sofa watching this thing, and she's saying, now, wait a second. This young lady went to high school in Ka'u and she's preparing to study study abroad in, in a Korean program in Busan, South Korea. Mm-hmm. Okay, now in the middle of this was a trip to Vietnam. Yes, correct. And you went on this trip recently, mm-hmm. the, the one that Natasha was talking about. W- is there some connection between this trip and you going to South Korea? Yes, definitely. Um, getting the scholarship to go to Vietnam really raised my confidence with being able to apply to other programs and it really encouraged me to want to travel abroad to more countries, especially in Asia. So let me see if I understand this. You go on this trip to Vietnam, Mm -hmm. something happens there in Vietnam, but inside of you it kind of lights a fuse in your heart that you got to learn more, you got to study more, Mm -hmm. and you want to get out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You know, I was welcomed so warmly in Vietnam, and it kind of gave me the idea of why not try other places? You know, I could get a completely different experience somewhere else, or I could get more of a great thing. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, we're going to talk about the Vietnam trip in just a moment here, but Mm -hmm. what I want you to do is, um, for the benefit of you know, your maybe former colleagues at Ka'u High School and there are other high school students from all over the state that are watching us here now Mm -hmm. and their parents. Do you happen to know what the Pacific Asian Affairs Council is going to do about their their trip coming up this summer? Where are they going to go? Well, this summer they are going to Japan. Oh, my goodness. So if you're... (laughs) That's a trip you may not want to miss. So, Mm -hmm. um, again, Pacific Asian Affairs uh, Council website check it out. All right, so let's go to Vietnam. Um, Just 
Very briefly, can you just tick off the places that you visited in Vietnam? Where, where, where did you go? Well, we first landed in Hanoi, which is the capital of Vietnam, and then we went to the minority villages in Sapa. And That's up in the mountains in the north, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then we went to Halong Bay, which is a World Heritage Site, and then we went to Hoi An, and then made our way down to Ho Chi Minh and the Mekong Delta. Okay, and so was there one particular event or experience that, as you look back on this now, is something that that helped to kind of light that fuse in you to to want to learn more about uh, uh, the whole international field, to study abroad? Was there something that happened during that, that visit that was kind of a big aha for you? Well, I would say that going up to Sapa, to the minority villages with some of the high school students from Hoi An, or from Hanoi, um, really made me want to study abroad more because I made a lot of connections with the students who I still keep in touch with now. And it, it was very amazing for me to meet people who I didn't think I'd have anything in common with and then have this like instant connection and friendship and then going to some place as foreign as these minority villages and spending the night. Did you, did you stay in a fancy hotel while you were on this trip? No, um, we actually slept on um, mats with mosquito nets over them inside of, um, it was like a large room. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, <laughs> see, the parents out there, they're going to panic when they hear this, okay? All right, so, but, so you have the mosquito net mat experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, and any time during the entire trip did you spend the night in a hotel? Yes, we actually stayed at the Rex Hotel, which is a five-star hotel okay. in Ho Chi Minh. Okay, so parents relax. It's okay. I mean, they, they do some pretty cool <laughs> stuff. Okay. We ate very well. And, and your big picture, looking back on this this whole adventure of yours, um, mm -hmm. what would you what would you tell some high school student who is watching this program? What's what would you tell them? What kind of advice would you give them? I would say that the best thing to do is to try. It seems that so many people don't think that they'll get the, the scholarship, so they don't even apply. They don't try. And just finding the kind of bravery just to send the application enough can be the best thing because you never know when you're actually going to get it, and then you receive this life-changing scholarship. So you have <clears throat> today... Mm -hmm. You're on your way. You have one, one life-changing scholarship already. Mm -hmm. you're, you're lining up for a second one, right? This yes. is the trip to South Korea. Mm -hmm. and, and then I guess it's fair to say that you had a life-changing experience on this trip. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, getting to know, getting to be completely surrounded by a completely different culture, that was a life-changing event. It really made me see things through from a different pers perspective and be able to be able to kind of relate to other people in a different way. This is fascinating. You're watching Asian Review. We have uh, Brittany Moorhead with us, formerly from Ka'u High School, now with uh, KCC here in Honolulu. And uh, Brittany, we wish you the best of luck. I'm mm -hmm. excited as, a, as an international business lawyer to see the, uh, the fire lit in a, uh, in a potential young leader here in Hawaii. And um, you're kind of a proof that the whole program actually does work. So thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, uh, we wish you the very best of luck. We are back here, Asian Review. I'm your host, David Day, and we're talking about the Pacific and Asian Affairs Council, uh, another one of Hawaii's bridges to Asia. And um, with us here is Sierra Callahan. Not an Irish name. Sierra is, is here from Aea High School. Sierra, welcome to Asian Review. Thank you. And uh, I know that you've probably got a few uh, friends and colleagues at, at uh, IA High School who are watching this program. And um, just so you know, Sierra has had 
previous television experience. So <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna come across really well here in this. Uh, I hope but, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you will. Um, okay, so let's let's find out from you. Um, kind of let's start generally first. What what's your reaction to this this whole adventure that you went on this uh, this trip to Vietnam this summer? Well, initially. Um, I heard about it from my friends. Um, one of my friends had gone to Vietnam the previous year and another one to Korea two years before I applied. And I was really hesitant. I didn't think that I would even get accepted or an interview. But after I did, I was nervous to go to Vietnam. I imagined it as a third world country and I was, I was just scared in general, but it turned out to be a really life-changing experience. So we'll get into this life-changing experience with you in just a moment here, but would you tell um, our audience what what's you, what's involved in the preparation of this trip before you actually left Hawaii? What what did they have you do to get ready? Um, they actually made sure we were really prepared to travel to a different country. We spent a week at UH at the East West Center and. We studied Vietnam, the culture, we learned some of the language, and we had guest speakers, and we also had to do projects. Each student had to do a presentation on something about Vietnam. So when we went to Vietnam, we felt prepared, and we knew all of the safety rules and stuff like that. So we were really prepared going into a different country. They even taught you, as I recall, how to cross the street, yes, right? Yes, the crazy <laughs> streets of Vietnam. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so what What's the purpose of all that preparation work? Just to be sure that when we go into the country, we can have the full experience because we know about the background, about the culture, and also how they live, and to be sure that we're safe, and also that we can just enjoy the experience. So you're not, you're not getting off the plane kind of like a tourist looking at maps mm -hmm. and saying, well, what should we do this afternoon, right? Not really. We have it all planned out for us. OK, OK. Now, a few minutes ago, you you mentioned the words, and we'll we'll get into a little bit more detail of the trip uh, a little bit later on in the program here, because I want our viewers to know, you know, they they've heard from um, Brittany, kind of the, the the list of the places that you visited, but but unless they know Vietnam, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to that in a second, but in a, a few mo few moments ago, you used the words life changing experience, mm -hmm. and in what way did this trip change your life? It changed my life in many aspects. Um, being from Hawaii, we're used to such a small island. And I have, before the trip, I had never been outside of the country, let alone outside of the west coast of the United States. So going to a foreign country was, it was scary. But once I got there, I saw how big the world is and it changed my future aspirations, you know, um, concerning what I want to do after college and also what I want to study. And it helped open my eyes that there is a world, there's so many different cultures than just the American way. So it changed my life in terms of I made relationships with people I still keep in contact with. I have a different outlook on the world and also the connections that each country has with each other. And I saw that it just isn't the island of Hawaii. You know, as I listen to you, Sierra, I'm thinking to myself, um, my goodness, you know, this this little, how many days were you there? 16. This 16-day 16 trip is really, you know, when you think about it in the big picture, um, golly, what a, what a priceless gem in your life. Mm -hmm. Definitely. How, how what, what was, what did it change about the direction of your life, your plans? You're, you're in the process of, of applying to college yes. now, right? So what, what, change, what change took place? Well, originally I wanted to go to college and study English and go to law school after I graduated. Okay. But going to a different country, I thought, why just limit myself to this island or the United States? And I decided that when I do go to college, I want to study abroad possibly my junior year. And I also want to study international studies so that I can do hopefully international law after I graduate. Interesting, mm -hmm. okay, okay. What, um, what is your, your kind of the piece of wisdom that came out of this trip from, from seeing the, the urban center at Ho Chi Minh City? What is it that 
about Ho Chi Minh City. What's it like? It's very um, modern. And when you think about Vietnam, you think kind of third world, not too modern. But going to Ho Chi Minh City, it was amazing. There's skyscrapers and it's actually slightly more modern than here in some areas. And you see so many businesses that are rising and construction and it's populated. So it really shows how Vietnam is rising economically and um, with other countries on a global level. So how was the food? It was great. Okay. <laughs> you can't right. get full like that anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So so this this massive urban center, uh, Ho Chi Minh has, if you include the suburbs, I think something like 18 million people in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a real urban sense that you yes. could not get here in Hawaii, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's 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 flip the scale and go to the other side. Let's go up now. Let me take you. What was this this trip that Brittany was talking about up to the the mountain village at Sapa in the in the in the mountains of uh, northern Vietnam? What, what what was that like? Um, we took a train to Sapa, and basically, it's not very modern at all. They have their hotels, and it's almost a tourist destination, but it's really there's not a lot of electricity and there's a lot of minority groups so going there it was it was almost a culture shock because it's just away from everything and all you can see are rolling rice paddies and just the mountains it's near the border of china so you can see a lot of mountains around you but just being around um, the minorities and being around their lifestyle was really eye-opening to you know, being taken away from our culture of electronics and my hair straightener and such, it was really different. <laughs> okay, okay. And no iPhone, right? No <laughs> iPhone, no connection. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so were you able to, through a translator, were you able to, to talk with any of the minority peoples while you were there? They actually know some English. So immediately from getting off of the bus, going to Sapa, um, we were surrounded by the minorities and they would say, buy from me, and they had their homemade goodies and they would ask for your name and they followed us around. Like, I guess each person would choose us tourists and they would follow us around and you know tell us about how they live and stuff. So they know wow. some English. Did you see any of their homes where they live? Yes, we did a homestay actually deep in Sapa and we were able to see how they live um, next to the streams and the rice paddies and stuff. All right, so let's help me now with this. We have people who are watching this and they're thinking to themselves, boy, I wonder what that's like. So you stay in the home of one of these minority mm-hmm. peoples with no electricity. Do they have running water in the house? Um, they had an outside shower separate Out- from the house, yes. Outside uh, hot water? No, it was rather cold. Rather cold, yeah. okay. Do they have running water inside the house? No, not the house I stayed in. Okay, and so uh, what was it like inside? It was um, dark because there was one light in the house I stayed in, and it was really dark. We had to sleep under mosquito nets because of the bugs, and it got hot. It was, I remember it being really hot because it's Vietnam, and it was different because we had to sleep on the floor, and it was, there was bugs, and it was interesting, but it was, it was actually a little bit refreshing being away from all the technology. Interesting, interesting. Um, what did you observe? Let's go to a, because we'll, we'll come back to talking about various places that you visited, but I want to go to a different topic, Sierra, for a moment, and, and let's, let's you and I talk a little bit about what did you see happening with your fellow students on this trip uh, uh, through the course of the trip? What kind of observations, I'm not asking you to name names, but what, what did kind of things did you see that was happening to them? Um, when we first went on the trip, we all were hesitant. We were kind of closed off in a way to um, the Vietnamese people, but as we progressed through the trip, we all saw how open they are and how you know warm they were to us and willing. Like we were all thinking, oh, Vietnam War. But the more we got to know the Vietnamese people, the more we saw that they're really looking towards the future, and they were extremely warm to all of us. So we all opened up, and. In a way, I think each one of the students that went on the trip gained a greater appreciation for what we have because we saw... You mean have here in Hawaii or here, in, in here the Here in the United States, okay. yes. Because we saw what it's like to really have to work for everything you have and to have to look towards the future when 
here in the United States, we're given a lot. We have a lot of privileges. So I think each of us gained a really big appreciation for where we live. Is this the kind of trip that he, if you were, let's say you were a, a parent or let's say even a school administrator, and I, and I realize it's, it's impractical from a financial standpoint, but is this the kind of experience that, that you would want most high school students in the state to go through? Yes. Um, whenever anybody asks me that, I always say definitely because um, before going on the trip, I would look at magazines, I would watch videos on YouTube about Vietnam and other countries, but there's really no comparison that you can do between pictures and actually being in the country, experiencing the culture and being engulfed in their lifestyle. So definitely it's something that every high school student and even after or before high school um, person should experience just the different cultures and the eye openings of how big the world is. What was the most beautiful thing that you saw in Vietnam? The thing that you said, oh my God, that is so gorgeous. Um, in terms of like a landmark or? Just, Anything. Oh, you know, okay. What, what, what really hit you about that, that, you, that, that you thought was really beautiful? I definitely think the people, um, they were so beautiful in terms of their heart and just what they were doing. Um, the, walking around places like Hanoi or Hoi An, you see so many people working from when they wake up to when they go to sleep and it's so hot and for me, I was like, how are they working in this heat and focusing and just being so motivated to make a future for themselves? And I think that's so beautiful about how they're really looking towards the future. I didn't hear anybody really talk about the past, such as the Vietnam War. They were open to us as Americans. So I think that's the most beautiful thing is how they're really determined to make a better future for their country. Let's go now to the, the, your visit to the city of Hanoi. Um, what, what, what is the, the, the thing about your trip, the event that you recall now about Hanoi that, that will stick with you forever? Um, well, first off is the traffic in Hanoi because um, it's really bustling and it's crowded and there's mopeds zooming around you everywhere. But another thing is all the shops that are around and how, like I said earlier, the hard workers. Um, Hanoi really is jam-packed with shops and just people working hard, so that really stuck with me. And also the students that I met in Hanoi, um, we had the opportunity to do a homestay with some okay. of the local Vietnamese students. And it was really life-changing because just being in a home of a Vietnamese student and also their family, it was great to see how they live and how hard they work and especially how hard the students study compared to some American students, you know, they really study from when they get home until they sleep, they wake up, they study, go to school. It was really different. What, what I want you, Sierra, to, to tell our viewers, what's the home that you stayed in Hanoi? What's it like? What was the home like? Um, the home I stayed in Hanoi, um, my homestay partner's name was Quan, and unfortunately I was sick, so I couldn't sleep overnight because I got sick, um, but I was able to have you know, a meal with the family and also just see what he would do during the daytime. And it was really um, a narrow home, tall. And instead of, I think because Vietnam is so populated or the city of Hanoi, that the homes don't really stretch out in width, they're more height. Okay, so, so it three was a stories tall, or so? It was, yes, three stories. Okay. It was tall and everything was kind of squished together, but it was a nice home and you can always smell the food in each home that I went to. There's definitely always Vietnamese food being cooked. What, and so they had electricity? Yes, they had electricity. And they had running water in the house? Mm -hmm. They have bathrooms? Yes. Um, did the family own a car? Um, they didn't own a car, they owned the mopeds. Mopeds, yeah. okay. How about, did they speak English? The mother of my homestay partner didn't, but he did, my homestay partner did. He did? Yes. Okay. And when you, you connected with these high school students in Hanoi, did they speak English? Yes, they were actually um, rather fluent. They started learning from usually the age of six how to speak English. So when they were just learning how to speak Vietnamese, they started to learn English as well. So no problem communicating with the high school students at all? Um, not too much. We taught them slangs and they taught us slangs. <laughs> so it was fun. 
Yeah. All right, all right. So, so, so share with us. Do you remember one of the slang expressions they taught you? Um, they would teach us like hand gestures, and they taught us hand games, and they also taught us how to say "fa" correctly because here we say "fa," but it's actually "fa." So, "fa," <laughs> "fa," yeah, with the okay. little raise in tone. It's not "fo." No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So give me let's give me an example. Let, let's do let's share with me now. So so show me one of the hand games that, that they taught you. Um they taught us how to do a hand game. It goes like this, so rather okay. American. So it, you start you put your hands like, like this? Like <laughs> like this and okay. then you just hit it together. Okay. And then you go across okay. like this and then you do you back, like forward, forward, and then you go like this again. Oh, like this. Okay. <laughs> like this. And then okay. you do the back forward again. Okay, and they do and it really fast. Going. Yes, they do it really fast. And you keep progressing. You add the hand slaps as you go along. And so the first one that goofs up, then you lose. Yes, you lose. Interesting. <laughs> and we taught them some as well. Okay, so what did you teach them? Um, we taught them seven. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. And you keep progressing. You count and add motions each time on a okay. table. So. Um, during dinner and such, we would we would go to restaurants and do it really loud with all the students, and <laughs> we would count really loud, and then they would teach us to count Vietnamese. So you 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 developed some real bonding with yes, these students definitely. from Hanoi. I'm still in touch with a lot of the students that I met in Hanoi. And do you, th do you and based on those communications, are any of them planning to be, come to the U.S. for a college or um, to see them again? Or? My home stay partner actually really wanted to study in the US, so we're still in touch and I'm planning on helping him to try to find scholarships or anything he can do to study abroad when he goes to a university. This is an amazing bonding that takes place. You're watching Asian Review. I'm your host, David Day, and with us is Sierra Callahan from IA High School, and we're talking about the summer study tour to Vietnam. So stay with us, because there's a lot more to go here. Um, Let's move now to another place that you visited in Vietnam, the city of Hoi An mm -hmm. in central Vietnam. And, and what do you recall about that place? Um, Hoi An, I mainly remember the shops, the tailored shops that are there, and they're everywhere. I guess it's their I mean, this main, is custom, custom yeah, made clothes? Yeah, custom clothes. Okay, all right. And you can just walk down the street and you'll see about five lined up, and I guess that's their main way of attracting tourists. That's what they're known for. Okay. So a lot of the students, actually, I think almost all of us got something tailor made. So I got a dress. Some people got suits. It was okay. really nice. So how did the you had the dress made out of silk? Yes, silk. And um, what color was it? It's a it's an almost a royal blue, a little bit lighter. Okay, and a dress, and so. How was the end product? It's really nice. Um, it fits me perfectly. The measurements the woman took, she really sewed it to par. It's a nice dress. You didn't, Sierra, now, come on. This, just between the two of us now, you didn't have your senior prom dress made in Hoi An, Vietnam, did you? No, but um, my roommate did. Really? Yes, she did. She had her prom dress made there. It, was, it turned out really nice. It really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so okay, so this dress that you had made, um, so how would you describe it to the to the viewers? Is it like a cocktail dress or? or uh, uh, it's like a dinner dress. I was dinner, looking okay. for something a little more fancy, so I used a, almost like a shiny silk, and it it goes just off the shoulders, and then it has a tie waist. Okay, yeah. and so what did that cost? Um, it was I think it was about thirty five dollars. Custom for the dress. made. Yes, custom made. And it's really good quality too. Did you see any of the the guys have have suits made? Yes, um, my friend had a suit made. And how did that turn out? It was nice. It fit him well, and he had the pockets printed and everything. And so, so, what did he spend for the suit? I'm not sure how much he spent, but I know it was affordable for a suit. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, anything else about Hoi An? Um, well, that's where we had most of our free time. So we definitely got to visit different locations and. One thing that I remember I learned there was what the Vietnamese unicorn is like, and it kind of looks like a dragon. And they were like, oh, that's almost like our unicorn. And it was different, but it was nice to see the differences between our cultures. And that's just one thing that stands out to me. Okay, okay. So while you were in Hoi An, did you happen to see um, in the middle of the town there uh, kind of an old bridge? Yes, we did see the old bridge. And so what's that like? Um, that's connecting the two parts. Are you speaking of that bridge? Yeah. Right. Um, we went to the old bridge, and it's it's really old. It's a historic bridge, and it has inside it has 
almost like a temple like room and we got to walk on the bridge and take pictures near it and it's a tourist attraction definitely so it was nice seeing something that's really historic and Hoi An in general has a lot of older older locations that you can visit so it was nice seeing something that is older in that Area. This is this is just absolutely fascinating. And so okay, and so from Hoi An, then where did you go on this trip? After Hoi An, we went to um, the Ho Chi Minh City. Okay. Yes. And you stayed in the city for we how long? So we went to the city and um, we slept overnight, and we went straight to the Mekong Delta. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so you're in the city, urban environment, and then mm -hmm. boom, overnight you're out the in the Mekong Delta. Delta. What is that like? so different you have to take a boat to get there and it's really out almost in like the swampish area but um, when we got there we ate lunch in a home and we got to homestay in the Mekong Delta okay so let's you know you've described this homestay up in Saba with mm -hmm. the minority people you mm -hmm. had a partner's home that you stayed in the the, the skinny tall three-story mm -hmm. house in in Hanoi what was the homestay in the Mekong Delta like um, it was different because it is um, in a different part of Vietnam than Hanoi or Sapa. So it was warmer, definitely, and a lot more humid. But the home was more modern than what we stayed in in Sapa. But the food was different because it was mainly taken from the Mekong Delta, and there was a lot of seafood, and we got to go on bike rides around the Mekong Delta, and um, it's a little bit more modern than Sapa. Okay, so what's the the home? Did it have electricity? Yes, it had electricity. How about running water in, inside? Um, no, it was outside once again. No bathrooms? No, the bathrooms are separate. And no showers or? Um, the shower was in the bathroom separate. Okay. Hot water? No. Okay. <laughs> it was cold. And what, so what, what, what did you sleep on? Um, I slept on a bed, and there were two homes. We were split up into two homes, and I think each of us got a bed. The home I stayed in had beds and mosquito nets, and um, we had fans, but the electrical outlet was broken, so it was hot. <laughs> okay, and so no light? Um, no, there was, like, there was a few lights throughout the house, mainly in the kitchen. The bedrooms only had a, one dim light. Okay, and how do they cook? Do they use an electric stove, or do they use, what do they use to um, cook? They had, they had an electric stove, but mainly they used what they had. They, would, they used uh, a lot of just things that they didn't actually have to be cooked. So we made a lot of spring rolls, actually. Okay. So we didn't really have to cook those, and we helped them cook dinner. And one thing that stood out to me was where we washed the dishes. Um, we washed it in the back, outside. So there was really no sink to wash dishes. We just washed it on the floor, and we would use a hose that was outside and use soap. And we hose washed on the floor. Hose and soap. Yeah. Okay, okay. And for our viewers, could you, what, what does the delta look like? What, what does the land look like? Um, it's really green because it is near the water, but the Mekong Delta itself is more of a murky water, but around it is a lot of vegetation, so you're constantly surrounded by green. A lot of rice paddies? Um, no, not like Sapa. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, and so then you have this, the, these, these three homestays, and then, and then what happened? You re returned to Ho Chi Minh City? Yes, and we stayed in a top-notch hotel, the Rex Hotel. Famous old hotel mm -hmm. in, in formerly in Saigon. Okay, and so what was that like? It was different coming back from the Mekong Delta and then staying in, you know, a five-star hotel. It was, it was such a day and night kind of experience. And having running water, hot water, nice meal in the morning. It was two contrasting experiences. And did you have a chance to to shop or to look around Ho Chi Minh City and to um, travel? On? We were there not too long, but we did have a chance to go look around a little bit. And we, okay. we had the chance to explore the hotel. Did you, did you hook up with any students in Ho Chi Minh City? Yes, we did. Um, we met from students with, from Tai Ben High School, and we also did a um, homestay there in the dormitories of Tai Ben High School. So these are students that have their own dormitories? Yes, it's, um, it's a private school, and they have their own dorms, and they stay there. And some students go home during the weekends, but most of them stay there throughout okay. the whole week. And you stayed with one overnight? or One overnight. Okay, yes. so what was it like staying in the dormitory? Um, it was, in a way, I found it rather stressful because all the girls are cramped into, you know, one room and um, they're all running around trying to shower. The showers are shared showers, so there's like a thin wall separating showers, but um, 
the wall is rather clear so I felt a little bit awkward showering but it was definitely a busy day when we stayed at the dormitories because from immediately when the students ended studying they would eat and then they would go to their you know to their beds and they would study more and then go to sleep so it's definitely a cram day for them what what was the um the ability of those students to speak mm -hmm. English what was it like um their their ability was definitely good they were well versed in English and um it was interesting because we would talk about music and stuff and they knew a lot of the music that I liked and some of the other students from Hawaii liked. So they knew a lot of a lot about the American culture. Yeah. What and I know this this may be a very difficult question to for you to ask but as as you go as you think of your experience with the the students from from the south compared to the north did you notice a a a difference at all? Is there a cultural difference or anything? There was a cultural difference. Um, from the students from Hanoi, they're not as, um, I guess you could say, up to date with certain things, but the students from Ho Chi Minh from Taiban High School, they really know what's going on in the modern sense of the world because I guess they are from a bigger city, you know, a more populated um, modern city. So going to Hanoi, they're slightly more relaxed, and then going to Ho Chi Minh, they were more, I noticed they were more energetic and they like to get out more. Mm -hmm. And did you have a chance to do, do some classes with those students or, or yes, activities with did. them? What kind of things did you um, do with them? Well, the students that we were partnered with got to choose. So I went to a cooking class and we got to, you know, I, I did the grading with corn and such. And um, I also sat in on one of their martial arts classes, which was really intense. I tried kicking, and I, it was very hard. But they're really good at it. The cooking class, is that something that they have in their high school as a part of their regular mm -hmm. yes, study? Yes, it's, it's a regular study, yeah. And is this just for cooking to be a chef, or, um, or just? I'm, I'm not sure, but I know that you can choose to take the class. It's like one of their electives. Like we okay. have electives here. Okay. Yeah, they have different electives. They have like dance. They have the cooking class, and they have the martial arts class and such. And 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 the, this martial arts class were the were the girls participating as well. Yes, they were. And it's a kickboxing type it's, of. It's it's um it's almost like kung fu. I don't quite remember what it was, but um, when I tried, I was definitely out of breath, and they were they were fine. <laughs> So, have uh, you taken any martial arts here in no, Hawaii at all? No, no, I've never taken. So, martial total arts. new experience. Totally here. new. And are you connected with any of the students from from South Vietnam now, yes, or from yes. from Saigon? Yes, I have some of them through email, and I have some of them through Facebook. So I'm still connected with them. As you look back on this trip now, and you've seen, um, I think, some changes uh, in other other students that went along with you. Um, as you look back, uh, are there any other ahas or, or giant things that, that you've learned that, that we haven't talked about so far today? Um, I think one of the biggest ahas that each of us had is that you really need to um, take chances and really get yourself out there. Um, a lot of people will spend their whole life living in the United States or visiting different states, but one thing that each of us continue to talk about every time we meet or every time we talk on Facebook or just text is about how we really want to visit other parts of the world. So that's probably the biggest aha is how big the world is and how much opportunities there are out there to travel. There's so many scholarships and PAC is a great scholarship that high school students should apply for. And we all definitely see this trip as one of the best experiences of our lives. Were you involved, or have you been involved in any other of the PAC programs other than this the study tour to Vietnam? Um, yes, I was in the PAC after school study program in my freshman year, so it was a half credit social studies um, class that occurred, I think, in the second semester of my freshman year. And after that class, I enjoyed it a lot, so I joined the PAC club at my school my junior year, and this year... Um, I'm also in PAC Club, and I'm the vice president, and I attend conventions and such that PAC holds. There's a program that the Pacific Asian Affairs Council has coming up on water. Mm -hmm. What is that all about? Well, basically, they're just going to be talking about 
water, the worldwide aspects of water, so water conservation, water, um, how we should use our water, how we should save our water, and it's it's going to be with students from around the high school, around the state, different high schools, and there are always guest speakers at the conventions, and it's really educational and really informational. Is that conference uh, something that a, that, a, that a student could come and, and, and find out more about the, the, the whole program? Yes, definitely. Um, if you are in PAC Club, you can come to the conference. Even if you're not, you can sign up, and there are permission forms or information about the conference on the PAC website and it's definitely something you want you want to come to. They're always fun experiences. You get to interact with other students and learn a lot about the program. You've been watching an Asian Review program on the Pacific and Asian Affairs Council and uh, we've been talking with uh, Sierra Callahan from AEA High School about the PAC summer study tour to Vietnam. Do I have that title right? Yes. <laughs> okay. And um, I hope you've learned a lot. And, and Sierra, uh, thank you so much for spending the time with us. And uh, I would encourage all of you from Maya High School to uh, give this lady a big hug when you, when you see her next time. I'm David Day for Asian Review. Good night. Mm -hmm.